We begin with the 23rd Psalm, and you'll find that on the service folder, and we can read together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We read from the High Holiday Liturgy, Birth is a beginning, and death a destination. Life is a journey, a going, a growing, from stage to stage, from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom. From weakness to strength, or strength to weakness, and often back again, from health to sickness, and back we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination. The life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage made stage by stage, from birth to death to life everlasting. And at this time, I'm honored to call upon Rabbi Kirk Levy to read from Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, a time for every experience under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to to speak. This time we invite her son Wayne and her son Norman will come up, not together, but individually to speak about Janus. We're here to celebrate my mom, Janice. I told her I was going to wear a Hawaiian shirt, so I did. <laughs> Mom was five feet of pure toughness, and she had to be. She overcome some incredible obstacles in her life and did it well. She endured some great highs and some super lows with the passing of her daughter, Carol. She was our mother, our friend, and my father. She was my superhero. Mom taught me some incredible lessons in life. How to use coupons, and list price is only a starting point. But one of the best lessons she taught me was to never, absolutely never, ever see yourself as a victim. I always have a choice in life. With mom, you knew exactly where you stood. There was no beating around the bush. She would tell you, absolutely tell you. And I definitely inherited that trait where I'm either all in or all out. If she was your friend, you had a friend you could count on, no questions asked. 
My mom taught me an incredible work ethic and to be on time. Mom worked for Jewel for 30 years at the same store. She went to work in the rain, snow, sleet. It didn't matter. And she didn't even have a car. She would walk, take buses, cabs, have friends take her. It didn't matter. She would always be there on time or early. All moms are very special. But my mom was my superhero. I love you, mom. My mom was an amazing person. She, like Wayne said, she would, she had no filter. She would tell you what she thought. Now, the funny thing about that is, I think I was in training through her whole time at Jewel because if there was a rude customer and she was bagging groceries, she would yell at the customer for mistreating the employees at Jewel. Um, when I was younger, I never really knew the importance of the family issue, the family values of family. Back in, back in 1990, I went to work for a great friend of mine named Doug Barron. And Doug was a guy that had massive family, you know, orientation and is a very family oriented person. And by hanging out with him, my life got better. My fam my life relationship got better with my mom. And I thank you for that, Doug. So a few years ago, Doug moved out to Arizona and we we're gonna move a Cadillac from one spot to another. And then bring back a Subaru. We left on a Friday night and we did this trip to Arizona and back to Illinois in seven days, Friday to Friday. Two and a half days to get there, we get to the first hotel and we check in and I get ready for bed. She gets ready for bed. She goes, Norm, I got a problem. And I go, what's that? She goes, the bed's too high. I can't get in. <laughs> I grabbed the ottoman and I said, Mom, can you climb up on the ottoman and climb into bed? She did. <laughs> Spent two and a half days in Arizona. Went to the mall. She had to buy three purses that she never even used. And then we came back. Well, here's the funny part about that. We were entering St. Louis and I was on the phone with my buddy Joe and he was on my headset and there was a big billboard, not that I would ever do this, but it said gentlemen's club, come on in. So I said, hey man, do you wanna go to a gentleman's club? And she goes, I don't care if you wanna go, I'll go with you. So my buddy Joe says in my ear, he goes, does she know what that is? And I go, hold on, let me ask her. Mom, you know what that is? She goes, yeah, it's where all those Michigan women dance naked. I've been around the block. Now, I never took her in there, but her response was golden. <laughs> but during the 14 years of my career of truck driving, she's been my best friend my mom, and she was just a great lady. And I want to thank everybody for being here and being with the family, and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share just a little bit about my relationship with Janice. I've known her for over 30 years, unfortunately when her father died, and then her mother, 
and the worst, I would say, Carol, Carol Ann. This was a dynamic woman. And I think, as the children said, she was a superhero. And she is and could be your best friend. When people go to a grocery store, I mean, think how fortunate we are. We have everything at our, at our fingertips. We walk in. We're not waiting in lines to get bread, milk, eggs. When you walked into the Jewel and Skokie Boulevard and you were checking out, you wanted to be in Janice's line. People would leave a line of which they're almost at the checkout to go to Janice's line. And you could sit there and say, you know, people talk about positions in life. And we read from Kohelet earlier. And the reality is, we're all the same, no matter what we have or don't have. But what this woman had, and I really want to express this to you so clearly, is she had a passion for what she did. She had a love of her family. And I love going to the Jewel. Because if Janice were there, I'd find out about what's going on with the family, you know, and no matter who was behind me, we'd be packing the bags together and Janice would be sharing everything. And let me tell you, her mother was the same way. She was a spitfire. And the love she had for her children and grandchildren, and when you got married, you brought in a whole wonderful family, and Janice loved you. You were another daughter. And you weren't just machetanisters. It was family. And how good for all of you. And I, and I have to say that usually one could speak about the next Torah portion, which talks about Isaac and his life. But I think, with all due respect to our tradition, the last portion we just read was Chaye Sarah, the death of Sarah, the matriarch. And Janice was a matriarch, not just a mother to you, but she was, she was pretty matriarchal in this, in this Skokie area, the Morton Grove area. And, and I, I, I personally feel terrible that she's no longer here with us physically. Because I've always enjoyed her company and with the tragedies that she suffered, always with a positive attitude. And Wayne, when you said about the victim, you are 100% right. You don't feel bad for, for Janice Mueller. She'll, she'll, she'll do fine just on her own. She needed you, though, the family. She loved her family. And if there's a lesson to walk away from Janice Mueller and her life, here we are in a pandemic. These are crazy times. And if Janice were standing here today, she'd sit there and say, OK, all right, we'll get through it. And then she'd probably tell you a story of what's going on. And the fact that she stood up for another human being, if, if, if they were rude to a checker, that's integrity. That's, that's a person you want to be with. May her memory be for a blessing. Amen. We rise for the memorial prayer, and we ask for a little chazanish from Yehuda Polstein. Thank you for rising. Shikino, 
Es nishmas genes Shahol chol yoloi lomo Ibal arachamim Yastirei o beseser ki nofo leoi lomi Yitzror bitror achayim es nishmaso Adonai hu nachal asov Yitzenuach v'shaloim al v'shkavo v'nomar Amen. We read together, O God, full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence among the holy and pure, who shine as the brightness of the firmament and to the soul of Janus Mueller, who has gone unto eternity. Lord of mercy, bring her under the cover of thy wings. And let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be God's possession, and may her repose be peace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, typically we would do the Kaddish at the grave, and we'll do that. But because so few people are allowed to be at the cemetery, we'll do the mourner's Kaddish here. And by way of introduction, the Kaddish, the word Kodesh just means sanctity, holiness. The work we do at a funeral home is called Chavra Kedisha, holy society. Marriage is called Kiddushin, sacredness. When we pray, we say, kadosh, 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 holy, holy, holy. When we're at the Shabbat table, we say, kiddush, which is the sanctity. We don't call it bracha shel yayin, a blessing of the wine, but we call it kiddush because the family's together. And as you so beautifully said, uh, Norman, about the relationship with family and what Doug taught you. And the Kaddish was written in Aramaic, a common language of the Jews at the time, and it speaks really only about the adjectives about God. But when they added the last line, they added it in Hebrew, the holy language of our people, which speaks only of peace. What we learn from that is peace is more important than anything in the world. So with that introduction, I again invite Rabbi Glebe to come forward to lead everybody in the Mourner's Kaddish. Yet Kedal, Vayet Kedash, Shamei Rabbah. Amen. Beama de Verakirute, Beam Lichmochute, Behayahon, U Yomechon, U Hayedeko Beit Yisrael, Beagala Ubisman Kuri, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba, Mevarachle Alam, Ulame Amaya, Yet Barach, Vishtabach, Vyet Paar, Vyet Romam, Vyet Nasse, Vyet Adar, Vyet Ale, Vyet Alam, Shemeda Kurisha. Berhu. Leolo min ho berchata, Vesherata, Toshpekata, Venechamata, Damiran beoma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba min Shemaya, Behaim Aleno be a whole Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. A se shalom bimrama, who ya se shalom, Aleno be a whole Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Amen. May God indeed comfort you with his peace during this time. Ladies and gentlemen, the services here at the chapel are concluded. For those of you who are gonna be going to the cemetery, we're gonna line up in our parking lot. Please obtain an orange safety funeral sticker to place on the right-hand side of your windshield. Have your bright lights and hazard lights on at all times. We'll have a car in the back of the procession to hopefully keep other cars from entering the procession. So, and, and, and also use your horn liberally as you're going through the intersections. Memorial contributions to the ARC would be appreciated. And for those of you who are here, that information is on the service folder. And for those of you who are watching online, that information is on our website. Also, the, the, uh, Wayne and Norman meant, wanted me to tell everyone that we're gonna do probably a proper uh, uh, shiva or a gathering when this pandemic's over and we can all do a l'chaim in Janice's memory. This time, I ask everyone to rise and stand in place as we escort the casket of Janus Mueller from the chapel, and then you may return to your cars. At this time, we are going to turn off the online portion. Thank you for attending online, and thank you for attending here.